We are here at the Alight booth with Leo Vischer, yes? Yes. It's nice to meet you, Leo. I haven't had a chance to meet you up until now, so it's great to have you uh, on the Laid Back Bach Report. So, Leo, tell our audience what sort of thing a light does. What do you make? I make several things, say parts for recumbents and velomobiles, small parts like idlers, chain wheels, and for the cargo bike industry, I make wheels, and one of my big next projects will be a pedal generator for anyone who wants it so that is in the end hay pitch fee vehicles right so the 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 bike two is the, yeah, the bike two system yeah, I, yeah. I i bought for little money the bike two system because they were tired of doing it after 12 years they were looking for yeah new blood if you can say it Right. And I will give it a try. Let's, we're going to look at some of the other things here, but if you could just describe for the audience what a pedal generator actually is. How does this work and what does it replace? Then, then you have a generator where your pedals are and you can pedaling with your hands or your feet, that doesn't matter. And it gives a little bit energy, but it should, in my optic, give you the feeling of what a chain has always been. So a direct um, connection between what's happening with you and your vehicle and what you are doing with your muscles and body. That, that's what, what I want. Right, so, and so to be specific, this, this pedal generator actually replaces a chain, yes? It replaces the chain, and if you're thinking about three and four wheelers, cargo bikes, they have very complicated drive trains, and then it can be an economical solution to replace the drive train. If you have, an, say, a rented fleet, you can make quickly adjustment, less maintenance, and you can add, but that you can add on many ways, more controller mm -hmm. uh, control, by the manufacturer over what's happening with your vehicle. So just to be clear, so we pedal, it's got a generator, it puts energy into the system with a battery, with a battery. and then the motors are on the wheels, right? Yeah, and yeah. so this is the yeah. propulsion system, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Um, and we'll take a look at a bike that has a, a similar system here. We are here with Andre from Golo. How you doing? It's good to see you again, Andre. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing good. It's a nice exhibition, isn't it? It's a beautiful I, one, new I, location. It's all great. Yeah. Now, we talked to Leo Vischer a bit about this pedal generator system that he called the Bike 2. Yeah. And now we have uh, in front of you the, an implementation of this system, and you know a lot more about this. So if you could tell us what you know about the current and where the current system, like where you think it's going. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we really like the idea of the serial hybrid generator drive because it's, uh, it skips the whole chain line. And uh, maintenance on a, on a bike, and especially on a cargo bike like this, where you don't have one chain but several chains, uh, is an issue. So with the, with the generator drive, you can uh, solve a few problems in the, in the same time. So one is maintenance, the other uh, is the drive feeling. So you have no gearing anymore, you, you're gearing electronically. So like software-wise, you're gearing just with software. Um, and it gives you a lot of freedom uh, in design. So you don't have the chain running here from the front to the back that you have to leave somewhere. So uh, there's, when you have suspension, there's no chain uh, in the way. So it gives you a lot of uh, freedom and possibilities to, uh, to develop uh, the bike how you like it. Good. So, Andre, this is uh, like a current system and Leo was telling us how they are developing uh, the next generation, I guess is yeah. fair to say. So, tell us a little bit about this and where you think it's going. Where, wh what developments are we to be expected? Yeah. There are several companies working on it, um, but I have tried a lot of them and till so far this is for me the only one that gives me the feeling that I'm still riding a bike with a chain. That's something that I think is important. There are people who think that's not important, but okay. That's, I think it's important that it still stays a, a bike. So, to be clear, what we're, the ultimate goal here is to make it feel like you are connected with a chain, like you would on a regular bike, yeah? Yeah, 
what you what what you want is that uh, it feels responsive. Mm -hmm. So if you put a little effort in it, you don't want the bike to shut off like a rocket. You want it to slowly. So when you when you're driving in traffic with people around you, um, you need it to react how you like it to react. So that that. That's that's the feeling you have with the chain. So when you with the chain, it's directly linked. When you put a little effort in it, it's slowly uh, gaining speed. And when you put a lot of effort in it, it is, yeah. Right. So as opposed to maybe some other systems where you just pedal has nothing to do with how fast or how slow or how much effort. Ex it just puts energy in the system. Right? Exactly that. Yeah. And so uh, finally, then. Uh, this is not available yet. What uh, what do you foresee as far as uh, when this is going to take a little while to develop and then you're going to see it in some products? Where is this going in the next uh, year or two? You tell me. Yeah, it's a bit hard to say because I'm not the one uh, trying to put this on the market. We we would love to put this in our cargo bike. We have developed the, the Golo cargo bike mm -hmm. where this could be a perfect system to, uh, to put in. Um, so that's also why we put it in, in the prototype of one of our Golos. Um, yeah, Leo is trying to develop it. There are other companies trying to develop something like this. But the, as I say, the Bike 2 is the only one that gives me the feeling I want to have. Um, and I know some like Mando is working for it for a long time. Um, it's close, but still not gives me the feeling I, I want to have in it. And it also depends on Leo and how much help he is getting how fast uh, this, the bike too, uh, will uh, develop and become on the market. But the sooner the better for us. Right. Interesting, uh, interesting piece of, uh, of kit, I think, and uh, we'll keep our eyes on this. So, Andre, thank you so much for uh, sharing your information about this. It's great. Thank you a lot. Okay. Uh, enjoy the exhibition and uh, we will meet again. Okay, I sure will. Okay. Thanks. Bye. So, let's go back now to some of the other products that you make. If you could briefly describe uh, your idlers and your... What's, tell us about some of the things you make and, and just briefly show us. Um, yeah, this is my idlers. I just pick one mm -hmm. to hold it in my hand. That's what I started many years ago. Um, injection molded idlers. I was then producer or uh, producer of Velomobiles and recumbents and I needed idlers and it was difficult to get cheap and good ones and then I decided once uh, then I will make my own ones and, uh, and then I decided not to put my brand on it but make them more no name uh -huh. so that competitors would be able to put my idler on their bike so I'm not claiming their bike with my products. Okay. So, so you were not a competitor to those folks in this regard, and so they yeah, could freely yeah. buy and use yes, them. Yes, then, and then they, we all have the benefit of, say, semi-mass production for a relative yeah, cheap or light and reproduced uh -huh. uh, parts. And that's what I did with the idlers. I did this here with, with the pedal, um, how do you say it? Bottom, Bottom brackets, brackets yeah. things. Last was the plastic uh, clamps on it. Uh -huh. Another part what I do is CNC milling. Yeah, so chain from here you see this is what a chain. Is this? this is a massive plate of aluminium milled into a complex or simple uh, chain wheel with two integrated uh, how do you call it? Protection rings. Yeah, yeah. Here you see perhaps better where, where I came from. Uh, this is with, with, with one protection ring. This was for recumbents with small rear wheels. And then you need bigger <laughs> chain wheels. And people ask me, can you make that? Challenge was the first customer for this. He said, can you make this? I said, yeah, probably I can. And I yeah. started with it. This is for racing. This is for racing. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have a 45 kilometers uh, in Europe, a uh, um, um, moped vehicle right and you need just go 45 kilometers an hour then you need a bigger chain ring so this pr this protects the chain from coming off on yeah, either side yeah, and yeah. it's amazing okay. all right yeah. and then what else we need to talk about wheels right yeah, wheels. all right so we have some wheels show us what you have this is my, yeah. my latest wheel okay. with with a wider wider rim i see in cargo bikes people are doing more and more kilos putting on the wheels they need bigger tires they need suspension. Yeah, therefore, I make in 
other wheel. Here you see the spokes bended, so you have more suspension in the wheel because plastic is not the best way to have a very high impact in it. Then a part can break away, mm -hmm. so you don't want that. For that I make an experiment, that's kind of, uh, call it the spider. I call it then a hybrid wheel. Mm -hmm. I will add, say, in this case, an aluminium rim to it. Then you have an old-fashioned rim, who can resistance to a high impact and a more, yeah, M elastic more an arch and, uh, and, yeah, okay. inside. Uh -huh. And it and by in injection molding, you can make nice-looking things. Right. You, 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 if you want to make this from metal, you have a very hard time to get this nice wheel from metal. Right. And, and this is a kind of a hybrid and it will take many years to find the mark niches where those wheels are good for and where those wheels... This is more for rented fleets, this is more for private persons because there is a huge difference between somebody who buys his own velomobile or cargo bike and people who work for car companies. Commercial, like commercial, commercial, yes. And that is such big, you, you can't combine that in one wheel. You have to make differentiations. I don't know where that will lead me to, but it's nice to do. That's the kind of the technical man in me yeah. try to experiment. Yeah, Leo. I mean, it's very clear to me that you love what you do here. This is uh, this is a, a joy for you to work on, isn't yeah. it? Yes, it is. Yes, it's wonderful. I wanted to uh, thank our amazing sponsors here at the Laid Back Bike Report at Spetsy 2023. Who are they? Let's see: Radical Design, HP Velotechnic, Bent Revolution. Uh, let's see, we got Jersey Bents, Falco E Motors, uh, we've got TerraCycle, yes. uh, let's see, Connecticut Yankee Peddler, and uh, anybody else? Uh, oh, Andrew at Trailside Trikes, I think he's in. No, for sure not. So, guys, thank you so much for supporting us at the Laid Back Bike Report here at Spetsy 2023. All right, guys, go on by. That's amazing. Look at them.